let's not glorify suffering if you have a connection use it it was just rejection after rejection it just felt like being stuck between a rock and a hard place I honestly can't think of any ups right now because it's been a lot of downs. Pretty young girl from Zambia, you know that she ain't with the drama. Light skin girl Osama, you know she the bomb, she cause trauma. Hey guys, welcome back to welcome to my channel. Hi, my name is Nyamba and I create YouTube content which you should subscribe to, okay? So for today's video, I am talking about how my journey's been one year post-grad, like where I am. I'm kind of just breaking down how it's been, I guess, over the past 12 months and giving you guys like tips and stuff from like what I've learned just over this period of time. It's been a very strange period, I must say, but that's why I'm here. I went through it, so you might not have to. <laughs> so I did finish uni in 2021 i finished in june and i officially graduated graduated in july that's when i got my grades and my results and my certificate saying i was officially a uni graduate and yeah it was very happy days but obviously i didn't have my graduation my like physical graduation till this year which was 2022 and if you didn't watch my graduation vlog what are you doing click the cards up here or the link in the description box to watch it. It was just like a full circle moment in terms of just closing the chapter and stuff. So I'm glad we got to have that. Otherwise, yeah, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to thumbs it up, share it with somebody, and of course, subscribe. Okay, so just a little disclaimer. This video is not meant to like scare any of you guys. It's just meant to literally explain what I personally went through. So like my personal experience. Not everyone has it this hard and... For some, not everyone has it that easy. So, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt, basically. <laughs> okay, so I'll just start with the first couple of months. That was basically the rest of June while I waited for my results, July, August, and part of September. Those were like the good months, I wanna say. Like right after you finish, you're chilling, you're having the time of your life. I was just so happy during that period. I couldn't even put it into words I guess you guys saw the vlogs like I was still in Zambia at the time and I was literally just glowing like I was just genuinely happy like I had good people around me the energy was great I felt great it was all good I had made the decision that I wanted to stay in Zambia I do want to come back and I said that in my post uni like Q&A mukbang video that I filmed I was like yeah I'm happy being at home I've decided I'm just gonna be here and at the time I wasn't exactly doing nothing I said I was working on myself, working on my brand at Nyemba Tembo and just working on like all that stuff, like my content creation side of things because it's something I just didn't proper have the time to like put in the work and stuff. I have so many plans that date back to even 2019 that have always just been plans and for me at that point it was like, okay, now I need to start executing said plans because, well, what's a plan with without action you know like I need to see it come to fruition so that was my plan I guess at the time and that's what I was working on but obviously in your typical African household if you're not working a nine-to-five you're doing nothing with your life you're throwing your life away like it was one of them situations you know like, I knew what I was doing but those around me didn't know what I was doing even though I did explain that this is what I'm doing but anyway as much as I don't dream of labor I did have the plan to start job hunting to look for a proper nine to five or whatever like an everyday job type of thing and my dad would always be on my case like oh have you started job hunting have you started job hunting I'm like no and his thing was like just submit applications like whether or not they go through is you know but for me it's like okay but what if they do go through I don't want to start work right away for me my plan was to start job hunting towards the end of the year so that if anything was to come up it would be in the new year which is 2022 and that's when I was ready to like you know give my time and energy to somebody else not myself that was the plan also i'm just looking at my notes by the way so i don't forget anything 
obviously my plans didn't exactly go to plan because I ended up being shipped back to the UK and for me it just felt like being stuck between a rock and a hard place because I just didn't want to be here my mindset was already somewhere else like I had already had all these plans in terms of how I wanted my life to go <laughs> that's a bit dramatic all my life but you know I had I had a step-by-step -step kind of plan like okay these few months I'm gonna work on Yamba Tembo as a business the next few months I'm gonna start job hunting in the new year God willing I'll get a new job I'll start working I'm gonna move out I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that like I had that kind of like game plan but then being sent back to the UK just like all that just got shifted and to say the least I was just disoriented I didn't want to come in the first place I ended up here and then being here it's like I wasn't in the circumstances that I thought I'd be in and it was just hard it was literally hard I can't even sugarcoat it cuz those who know know I went through it okay and it's one of those things where people think oh being abroad in the Western world or whatever is so easy it's so glamorized I want to say I think everything is easy like oh it's easy to get jobs it's easy to I don't know just live here and everything just comes to you but that's not the case at all and I I'm practically living proof of that some people have it easier for me I did not have it easy whatsoever and at first I was just looking for a part-time job just to earn me some money but those first couple months I was applying for job after job after job you guys it even led me to applying to work at McDonald's literally nothing wrong with working at McDonald's but for me that's like my last option like I'm not really trying to work at McDonald's I don't mind any other part-time job but like I don't really trying to work at McDonald's you know I even submitted that application for McDonald's and guess what it was just rejection after rejection after rejection not even McDonald's wanted to work with me or well, not work with me but McDonald's didn't even want me to work for them I was just like what the hell <laughs> Like, if you're guaranteed a job, it's practically McDonald's. People in the UK see it as if you're desperate for a job, go work for McDonald's type of thing. And even they didn't want me and I was just like, right. At this point, I'm defeated because of what the hell. So, I need a drink. I ended up being jobless for a few months. Somewhere in between, I got this job in Manchester and it just wasn't what I thought it was. I literally quit it like three days in or something. I barely lasted a week. I was just like, this is not what I want for me. No, it was just draining me. It just wasn't it. So I quit it and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep applying, keep doing what I have to do, I guess. Continued, even though it was just so draining, you guys. I can't even describe it. I also applied to this, not really a grad scheme but I guess you can call it that it's called 10,000 black interns and it's basically an organization that helps the minority groups like people of color get into really well-established companies and stuff and they have different companies that they work with and out of that came my current internship which I'm super duper grateful for so yeah that was something I had to look forward to but it wasn't till the summer so at this time when I was applying it was probably like October or November somewhere there and then at the same time I was still applying for part-time jobs eventually got a job that I was actually happy about so that was the job that I started in the new year which was January I think I began yeah it was after Christmas went for my interview before I think it was December I went for my interview but only started the job after Christmas which was in the new year so at least I now had an income and it just made life a little bit easier you know whereas those few months I would have obviously my AdSense money but then with that it all goes to my savings like back home so I don't really utilize it and then I had a couple like sponsorships and stuff I think yeah that's where my money was really coming from I obviously had some in my savings like barely anything in my savings I basically had to start my savings over from scratch oh my gosh I remember where all my savings money went all my savings went to 
buying concert tickets for Justin. Even though I was down in the dumps, I was like, let me just make myself feel good by spending my money on these tickets. So I did that. And before that, all my savings went to paying for hotel quarantine. Yeah, even with having my part-time job and securing my summer internship, I was still advised to continue applying for obviously like a full-time job. And at some point, I just gave up because with each job I applied to, it was just like rejection, rejection, rejection. I was still getting rejected, y'all. And I was just over it. I was over it. So I just stopped applying altogether. Literally, my dad would text me like, oh, how's job hunting going? Have you sent your application yet? I was like, no, I, I haven't. I can't even lie to you. Like, I haven't. I'm just done. I don't want it. At least now I have this part-time job and obviously there could be better, but I'm just defeated. Like, I'm just simply defeated and I'm not trying to deal with that. Even just the time I took my break during the month of January, I was off of YouTube. I was just so down in the dumps. Nothing was exciting me. I was just existing. I wasn't living, you know? But yeah, all along I was just like, okay, at least I have my summer internship and hopefully that turns into a proper job because I just put all my eggs in one basket, basically. That's what I did. Do I advise it? Probably not, but I do understand people who do that because this whole job hunting process is just so... It takes a toll on your mental, basically, in short. And even during that time, it's like, yeah, I would pray, I would try to stay positive and all this, but it would be so easy for me to compare my life to others who I know are in a better position than I am, or just those I would see on social media, like, oh yeah, they have their lives together, this and that. And that's why during that month in January, although I was still online, like on Instagram and Twitter and stuff, I really restricted how much I was online just to not compare myself, you know, because sometimes it's inevitable. You just end up feeling bad by looking at someone not even living their best life like that. It's not like people are posting on holiday all the time, but you know, you just see someone like, oh yeah, they just graduated. They now have a job. They're living alone. They have what I would call my goal life. Not really my dream life, but like what I want to, the life I want to be living right now, you know? So I just removed myself from that whole social media space and took the time out to try my best to feel better, whatever that meant. <laughs> Honestly, these past few months, for the first time in my life, I think I've dealt with depression. And I say for the first time because all along me dealing with like mental health and stuff it's mostly just been anxiety and stuff or even back in the day when i said oh i'm depressed i don't think that was depression that was probably just sadness and going through the motions change and all that but like for the first time in my life i feel like it was depression i didn't need to go to a doctor for them to say oh this is what you're going through but the symptoms were really giving they were giving depression actually and i thought i would read you guys part of of a journal entry in my prayer journal. So I started this journal just to rant and pray, basically. It's literally called Prayer and Blabber. You probably can't see that. This is from the 7th of April, because you'd think that by then I was like in a good place. And this was how many days? Only a few days before my birthday. This says, today has been one of those normal days till a wave of sadness or anxiety or reality simply slaps you in the face without warning. There are times when I feel like life is somewhat easing up and finally looking up, but then I come to the realization that that just might be me being delusional and refusing myself to feel. Practically just masking all the negative feelings and emotions I go through on a daily basis. I had a long catch-up session with Malimba the other day, and when he was asking me how I am, like mental health and all, I basically told him I'm not sure because there's a difference between being happy and being distracted from sadness so in short i'm more the latter because i know in my heart that i'm not happy i really just need a random ta-da from god and yeah even though i was feeling that way like my birthday came around and i just made sure i made it special for myself in whatever way possible <laughs> and you guys saw that i would say april i did feel better like genuinely i was in a better headspace like after that it's like i hit rock bottom and then you know how they say like the only way from rock bottom is up that's 
pretty much how it went like after my birthday i was just like in high spirits i was alone for like a whole week because musha and kaden who i live with they had gone on holiday so that definitely helped me it helped my mental state i should say towards the end of april i had gone to manchester for skincare launch kutemwa skin so that was nice and then after that i basically had stuff to look forward to and it was like my graduation and then i decided i needed a holiday because i was like it's the only way i can get to reset type of thing i had a little gap in between ending my part-time job and starting my internship it was like a two-week gap so i'm like you know what sis deserves a holiday i gathered all my little coins and booked myself a flight and that's how mauritius happened it wasn't just like an impromptu decision like it had been at the back of my head and i have a list on my phone this is like way off topic but i have a list on my phone of places i want to travel to and for the time being like mauritius just made the most sense i ended up doing that for myself and yeah i was just really being intentional in like the pursuit of happiness i want to say and at the time i was reading the book eat pray love which i recommend oh my gosh it is such a good book it really just helped me in terms of you know fighting for my happiness basically i may not be in the situation or the circumstances i would have hoped for and all of that but there's certain things in my control to make me happier and i just did that my money will come back my time won't and yeah that's why i just decided i needed to travel and yeah obviously my graduation going to bristol that just helped so much I feel like I say this each time I do a Q&A, but there were a bunch of similar questions, so I'll just answer them once. Do you want to do your master's anytime soon? The answer is no, and I knew that from jump. Even before the stress of third year, I knew that I didn't want to do my master's right away. I'll give it a couple years, see how I feel about it. Depending on where my life and like my career goes, I may not need to. I'm not one of those people who just strives for the accolades, you know what I mean? in terms of school i'm good i don't need to prove a point to anyone how is post uni life treating you it's been very ghetto but i like to believe that it's getting better <laughs> yeah i like where i am right now in terms of doing my internship and all that where do you see yourself in a year in a year's time i just see myself Child, this is hard because the last time I made serious plans, they didn't go according to my plan. So God's looking at me right now like, LOL, do you think you can really make plans? <laughs> anyway, if I had it my way, in a year's time, I would be moved back to Zambia, definitely. Living on my own, have my own car, just be making money, whether that's having a 9 to 5 or just from like content creation and stuff. I just want to be a better content creator a better influencer i guess i just want to perfect my craft even though perfection isn't a thing but you know i just always strive to be better but yeah definitely living in zambia a year from now is this where you thought you'd be a year post-grad definitely not i did not see myself being in the uk let's start there so no is your life now just going to forever be in the uk no god please no no definitely not you guys know i love home so much the uk isn't a permanent thing and even with my job now they have offices all around the world so if i'm blessed enough to like get a full-time job with them i'd love that it be remote and or i work from like the sa office that would be amazing because it's so close to home did you come out of uni as the person you strived to be that's a good question honestly i didn't put intense or immense pressure on myself to come out of uni a certain way but i will say i grew you know three years being spent in uni it just opened my eyes to a lot more things people cultures a whole just new dimension i guess you know but i loved uni and i love the person i came out of uni being i guess just this like stronger more intelligent version of myself if you had to go to uni again what would you do differently i would interact more yeah <laughs> i'm an introvert by nature but in social settings i'm more of an ambivert like i'm an introvert but i'll be extroverted with who i'm comfortable around type of thing in uni i was just very 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 introverted i barely spoke to anyone i only spoke to them if i had to speak to them so yeah, i'll just be more social attend more like acs events stuff like that but 
I say that now. If I were put back in that situation, I probably wouldn't interact, but hey, I can dream, okay? Have you found a job? Not a permanent one yet. Currently, like my internship is paid, so I guess yes, but not like a permanent one. When are you planning on returning to Zambia? Very soon, sooner than you think. Are you currently employed? Once again, yes I am, but it's a short-term employment. Fingers crossed it turns out to be full-term. <laughs> this is another master's question, but it also includes a doctorate. Like, do I intend on pursuing my doctorate anytime soon? The answer is no. If I do get a master's, it will end at master's. I have no interest in getting a PhD for who, for what. No, I'm good. How do you deal with yourself mentally after uni? Like I said, I just cried a lot. I prayed a lot. I did what I could do to make myself feel better I should say but being in the UK didn't really help me because the winters here are so harsh you can't really I mean you can go outside obviously but it's not like you really want to go outside the sun would go down at like 2 p.m. it's just very mentally draining but even with that I tried to do what I could do to make myself feel better I started reading again and all that so that definitely helped and I talked to people as well shout out to my support system you guys know yourselves Without you guys, I don't know how I would have survived all of this. How's job hunting in the UK different from Zambia, especially in the media space? I would say job hunting in the UK might just be easier in terms of the fact that everything is online. Whereas in Zambia, sometimes you have to go hand in your application in person and all of that. Whereas here, everything is basically online. So I'd say that's like the major difference. But I haven't proper tried tried job hunting in Zambia so I don't know properly. What has been the most challenging thing so far? Just finding your footing, I guess. I always say they just didn't explain this post-uni adulting thing to us properly because you're just there, you know? You're just literally, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You're just like, I don't know what I'm meant to be doing. I'm trying to look for a job, they don't want me. Not really at home there's pressure but then there is pressure in terms of, oh what are you doing with your life? But it's like, okay I'm trying to do something with my life. It's not working out. So what do you want me to do? So I guess the most challenging thing has just been trying to navigate that nothingness because it's a weird gap to be in. You know, you're not in school. You're not working. You're just existing. It's been hard in that aspect. Have you had to navigate uncertainties or risks? How did that go? Girl, my life right now is one big uncertainty. The whole, okay, not the entirety of the 12 months, but the months that I've been in the UK, which have been like nine-ish so far, have just been uncertain. With each month that goes by, I just never knew what was coming. How did it go? It went. It went. I just pushed through it, I guess. Biggest ups and downs of this stage of life. Are there any ups? I honestly can't think of any ups right now because it's been a lot of downs, to say the least. But I guess if I had to force an up, it would be just kind of like coming into your own, exploring what you like, what you don't like in terms of adulting. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully it does because it made sense in my head. But then when I said it out loud, it didn't make that much sense. So hopefully it does. In terms of downs, there's a lot of downs. A lot of downs. There's a lot of tears. I can't even lie. <laughs> Are you going to get an apartment when you move to Zambia? That is the plan. I want to move out as soon as possible. I've given myself a deadline. So hopefully, God willingly, it works out. How's the transition been for you? The change took a toll on me. How have you been coping? Relatable content. For me, the transition wasn't that bad while I was still in Zambia but when I came to the UK it was just terrible I can't even lie it was just terrible I cried and cried and was sad what is your dream job if you dream of working like I said earlier I don't dream of labor but since I do have to work for someone before I fully work for myself I think my dream job is just anything that gives me the space and time to utilize my creative juice 
juices. Obviously, I'd love for it to be something in like media or like journalism or you know stuff to do with cameras and stuff. But my internship currently is in market research for a tech company, which is a field I had never explored before. Out of my own interest, I had, but not in depth, like not actively working for a company in market research. It's different, but I actually like it and I wouldn't mind being taken on basically as full time because it's just like a whole different world, you know? And with the nature of my job, I work from home and I get to put in my two cents, give my creative ideas or whatever. I just get to be me type of thing, you know? I don't feel restricted. Like they have a content team as well, which that's very much what I do. So yeah, I feel welcome there. And a job that doesn't confine me to four walls, basically. I can choose to work from the cafe, from home, from wherever, as long as I'm getting my job done. I was actually laughing the other day we had a meeting and this guy was sat by his pool with the laptop and I'm like, yes, I love this company. <laughs> do you miss school? Because girl, my comfort is in school. I wouldn't say I miss school in terms of like the workload, but I miss the structure of it and just not having to think about all these other unnecessary things. I say unnecessary not because they're not necessary, but just because they just give headaches. So yeah, I miss that part of it, but not like the actual work. Do you ever feel like you're getting left behind by your peers? No, but like I said earlier in terms of like comparing myself to others, I don't compare in terms of, oh, they're moving at a quicker pace than I am. Um, like it's not a race and I understand that and it's like everything is made perfect in God's time and we're all on different paths and all of that but I compare myself in terms of looking at others like oh they have the tools and assets that facilitate in their lives being just a little bit easier than mine is right now oh maybe they have a car they have their own place stuff like that is stuff I would not kill for right now but stuff that would make my life just a little bit easier. It's never to the point where it's detrimental. I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I had their life. No, because you never really know what's going on in people's lives and I understand that. And the final question is just, how are you really? To be honest, I haven't been in a great headspace. And it's funny because I thought my life by now would be in so much more of like a better space especially mentally after going on holiday and everything but it just wasn't and that's what made me realize that there's certain things especially with like mental health and stuff that you have to deal with from the core because nothing outside of that will change it or help it I thought by going on vacation it would make me feel better in general which it did help because had I not gone I probably would have been in a side Ward by now but even after coming back I came back to reality and it all just hit me again where it's like you're not where you want to be you're still in this bump UK all this stuff basically and it hasn't been fun and I texted my mom I think that was last week where I was like I think I am battling with depression y'all heard it here first and I said it in a funny in like a joking way but that's the fact of the matter and I feel like me not acknowledging it is me running away from it type of thing but I will say that I am making active decisions in what what I know is best for my mental health, which I've been known from the jump, but hey, whatever. We had to go through the motions. I know I'll be in a much better space in a few months time for sure, like for sure. It just has to go that way because I've been through the dumps now. This season, post-grad being in the UK, like God has taught me what he needed to teach me. I hope, I pray. It's been a lot of character building, a lot of things that any other person I feel like would have crumbled under the pressure I've been through but you know I persevered for a reason and I just feel like the last few months of this year 
are just gonna be amazing. I'm looking forward to next year already because I'll be where I want to be in terms of geographical location. Just a lot of bits and bobs in my life will be, you know, tightened, I guess. The loose screws will be tightened. I'm not that great, but I will be soon enough. I believe it. And I thought I would finish this video off by giving you guys just some tips on, I guess, navigating post-grad. Tip number one is, if possible, have a plan before you finish school. Now, whether or not that plan goes to plan is for God to decide, but either way, just have a plan. It just makes life so much easier. The second one has to do with having a plan as well, and don't only have a plan, but have a plan A, B, C, and D. Trust me, like, if this fails, we're doing this. If this fails, we're doing this. If this fails, have those in place because then you won't be stranded. Like, I didn't have a A, B, C, and D. I had a plan A, which was stay at home and do my content and then eventually job hunt and stuff. That was all part of my plan A. I didn't have a plan B for when I came to the UK. I had to start making that as I went on and it just obviously didn't go right. So, like the old added adage goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, get planning. My third one is to take online courses or short courses just to better improve your already existing skill set or to learn new skills that you never know might help you along the way. Personally, I took a digital marketing course on Google. It's absolutely free, except it's very time consuming, but you do get a certification at the end of it, which you can add to your CV. Number four is make sure your LinkedIn profile is put together because your potential employers do and will look at it. So yeah, just have it organized, make it look presentable. Number five, this one might be the most important one on this list, and that is to network as much as possible. I know to us introverts, networking is like, oh my god, cringe. <laughs> but honestly, what I've learned is that networking will put you in rooms that your degree or your CV could never. Your network is literally your net worth, so network as much as possible. Number six, use your connections. There's literally no reason to feel bad about knowing someone who can help you out. I wish I had those connects because my life would just be so much easier. Obviously, I know a few people here and there, but, you know, just use your connections to your advantage. Like, you don't need to suffer in this life. There's this quote that I saw recently that was like, suffering doesn't mean you'll be successful. You might even die. So yeah, let's not glorify suffering. If you have a connection, use it. And the final one is to apply to graduate schemes and internships and stuff. I know that in places like Zambia, most of the internships aren't paid, which is technically illegal, but in a place like the UK and I'm sure other countries, internships are paid. So while you're looking for, you know, the job you actually want, just apply to internships and stuff, get paid while you gain experience, and you never know where that could lead. Like that could lead to full time employment or just strengthening your CV, which could lead to a job somewhere else. But overall, I've heard this a bunch of times stay positive keep praying like yes do all of that but also just be practical about it it hasn't been fun it hasn't been easy but we move the thing is if you're going through hell why would you want to stop in hell you know keep moving keep pushing it gets better i like to believe that it does get better so yeah i hope i haven't scarred you guys too much <laughs> and i hope some of you who are watching this have had a much easier time than i have had c'est la vie it's life i've gone through it I've learned what I needed to learn. I can't gather all the tears back and put them into my body that I've cried, so we gotta let bygones be bygones. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it or learned something from it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who might find it helpful, and of course, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!